I'm just joking. Um, this session is going to be a little bit of a catch-all session. So one of our challenges is some of the things we're taking you guys through, we might spend many sessions with a couple teaching them how to forgive or teaching them how to fight lies. And so the challenge is how do we take as many tools and put them into these sessions. So this session is going to be, we're going to kind of, this is the catch-all to kind of get some other things. Let me say but, this real quick. Um, by the way, my friend Paige over here, the one that I left out in the R's was remove. So write down remove. Means cast it out. Acts 16:18. Look up that scripture on remove in Romans 7:20. I mean, I sincerely apologize for questioning your mathematical skills. Hey, I appreciate that. Please forgive me. Oh, I already did. You know that's hard to do by one on one. Doing it in front of y'all is not easy. All right, so. As we get into this session, let's check in with our couple and see how they're doing. Jeff. I mean, he was on. Who was the other day? My husband. I figured if my friend can't help us, and our psychologist can't help us, then surely our pastor can help us. Are you serious? Pastor Stanley? We have a promise you don't throw me on the bus. We haven't seen him never sign. I promise I'm not going to pray for the bus this time. What room you going to here today? of a child, Chris and Andy had to step in. They found out the night before, I think it was. And Chris doesn't like crowds, right, Chris? <laughs> he probably is going to be mad at me for making him stand up. But Chris, you did a great job. What a good actor. Yes. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about this morning is personalities. So when Wendy and I meet with couples, whether they're Christians or not, this is one of the topics that sort of transcends whether they're believers or not. Because sometimes in, the wedding, in our wedding business, we meet with couples that they don't believe in Jesus. They don't want to talk about that. But there's still tools that we can give them to help them. Now, we hope they'll see Jesus through what we're bringing them. But one of the main things that we focus on is personalities. Um, I've had couples, uh, you know, these aren't like hard and stone statistics. But I've had couples tell me, man, if I would have known this, it probably would would solve about 80% of my arguments that we had. <clears throat> so, today we don't have enough time to dig completely into all the personality types and the pluses and minuses and all that, but one of the things that Kenny and Jeff have committed is if you guys are interested in digging deeper into this, we can schedule another session at your church, and we'll come and we'll do like a little workshop where we'll work through helping you figure out exactly what your personality is. 
Uh, one of the things I want to challenge you with is I, as I talk through the examples today, don't start overanalyzing which one you think you are. Okay? You might see some of these things in your spouse, but we really need to sit down and do this test together if you want to dig deeper into this. Um, and Wendy and I will be available. If you want to do that one-on-one, -on -one, if you want to do it as a group at their church, uh, we'd love to do it with you. So, God has given each of you a personality. Here's the curveball. He's actually giving you two. Now, no, I you're not bipolar. Yeah, I didn't say you're schizophrenic. <laughs> I didn't say you have multiple personalities. But the reality is most of us have two personalities, a dominant and then a sub. And then some of us are really weird like me and have three. So she, she's doomed. <laughs> she's got to keep up with three different people. Rarely do we run across couples that have the same personalities that match. The problem is, a lot of times, let's be honest, I think my spouse should think like I do. And my spouse should be motivated by the things I'm motivated by. And my spouse should process data like I process it. But the reality is she probably has a different personality that does all those things differently and maybe our problem is I'm frustrated with her and critical of her because she doesn't think the way I do. Okay? And that's just with one personality. Now bring in the second one. There's a potential that in your marriage you could represent all four personalities. This may sound overwhelming, but if you can start to get your arms around it, it's very powerful to start thinking the way they would think. Giving them a little grace for not thinking the way or reacting the way you would. All right, so each personality has pluses and minuses. This is back, you know, everything we've done, we've tried to get you to look inward, reflect, have a little humility. Quit thinking everything's your spouse's fault. Maybe you've got some things you need to work on too. Each personality has pluses and minuses. Each personality rests differently. I don't mean go home on Sunday afternoon after church and you've had a big lunch and you take a nap. I'm talking about how you rest and recharge. Can you tell them what that means? We're going to go through that. Okay. Again, it's almost impossible for us to cover it all, um, but I'm just going to kind of hit the high points. So one personality is very demanding and assertive. Very demanding and assertive. That personality gets things done. That's the positive. That personality, you, you know, last night we were trying to figure out a place to go get some dessert after we left here, and nobody can make a decision. And one of the people in our group that understands this personality thing, praise the Lord, she stepped up and she said, Jason, who in our group has the personality trait that would make a decision? And I went, and she made her decision for us. It was great. So it's not always a bad thing that someone's decisive and demanding. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I look at myself, but okay. What's the downside of that personality? The downside of that personality is they can run over people unintentionally. Sometimes they worry too much about what needs to be done instead of taking care of the people that are there. And sometimes they'll accidentally run over people. All right? Second personality is almost polar opposite of that. The positive is that second personality is life of the party. Very comfortable being in crowds, loves people, can become the center of attention in any crowd. That's positive because we need those. We need people to step up and break the awkwardness in big crowds and things like that. What's the downside of that personality? They can rarely get anything done. <laughs> that first personality says, I got something to get done and I don't really care who I'm doing it with and I'll run over you to get it done. The second one's like, I don't really care if there's anything to be done. I'll get fired if I get to hang out with people. They're polar opposites. But they both have positives they can bring to the situation. They both have negatives they can bring. Mm -hmm. All right? The third one is a very servant-based personality. This person likes to be behind the scenes. This person's very loyal. This person get things, gets things done. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Um, I'm going to pick on Chris, our, our superstar from our video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chris doesn't like crowds. He's not that second personality. Chris is not demanding and assertive, but that man's a servant. Mm -hmm. He'll do anything you ask him to do, even stepping way out of his comfort zone and doing a video. 
because he's a servant and he just needs to be told what to do and he'll do it. So obviously being a servant's good, right? Everything Jesus did was a servant. That, that's great. But what's the downside of that personality? Boy, that pe person can get their feelings hurt really easy. So the downside of that personality is sometimes they take criticism to heart. They take it a little too harshly and they get their feelings hurt. The final personality type is very task oriented. I need a spreadsheet. I need a to-do list. <laughs> the good news about this personality is they will make sure rules are followed and processes are followed. All the way down to the T. The downside of this personality is they can be a little critical. <laughs> My friend Ryan. <laughs> See, we embrace this because we talk about this a lot. And we understand each other's positives and negatives. We joke about the negatives and we embrace the positives and put people in positions where they can thrive in the positives of their personalities. So this is bigger than just your marriage. This can go to your workplace. All these tools are. You can go to your workplace. You can go to your church. Sometimes we put people in positions because they're willing. But we don't take time to understand their personalities, their pluses and their minuses. You put a very demanding an assertive person in children's ministry that may not be the best fit. Sit you may need the servant. Yeah. You may need the servant-based person. You ask a servant to get up on stage and preach, probably not a good idea because you're taking them out of their comfort zone. And they're, they're not even having to worry about getting their feelings hurt. They're already hurting their own feelings about how bad of a job they're doing. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the four major personality types. That's the pluses and minuses of them. But I mentioned rest earlier. So each of them rests differently. So that first personality that's very assertive and demanding rests by getting things done. Getting things done doesn't sound like rest, does it? But they can't rest until they get things done. Okay? Second personality, life of the party. We got this guy up here that keeps giggling because he is like off the charts on this personality. He recharges, this personality recharges by being around people. He loves it. <laughs> See? He loves this environment. Be around people, people energize him. That's how he rests. All right, then you go to the servant based personality. That personality rests by being alone. Okay, just let me have some alone time. Let me get off by myself and have some space. So this is probably starting to resonate with a lot of you guys. Oh yeah, I don't like crowds. I don't mind serving. Yes, I like to be alone sometimes. And my wife doesn't want to be alone. She wants to be out with people. Fourth personality, rest by getting a checklist done. <laughs> yes up here. So I started out the day, I made a checklist. I can't go to bed tonight until I have that checklist done because I will lay there and think about that checklist. Now, I'm not talking about anxiety. I'm not talking about anxiety keeping you from sleeping. I'm talking about where you're laying there and you're like, it doesn't really matter what's on that list. That list can be buy Q-tips at Walmart today. I didn't get it done and I can't rest until I get up and go to Walmart buy these Q-tips. <laughs> so each personality pluses and minus each rest differently. Go back to the video. In the video, by the way, this is probably a real example for this couple. <laughs> one of them said, I just want to go out with friends. And the other one said, I just want to stay home. Mm -hmm. It's not that the two don't want to do what the other one wants to do. That they don't want to spend time together. It's that you got one personality that's wanting to go hang out with people so they can rest. And you got one that's wanting to stay home so they can rest. So if you start to identify that maybe my spouse and I have a different personality and we rest differently, that's another place you can compromise. Sometimes Chris will have to go out with Andy and be around people and get out of his comfort zone. But sometimes she'll have to stay home with him and let him get rest. He's not saying he doesn't want to be with her. He needs to be completely alone as much as he's saying, let's stay home and do nothing because being around people wears me out. I know it energizes you, but it wears me out. And she's saying, but being at home wears me out. I need to be around people. So when you know these positive and negatives, you know how to rest. Now you can start to compromise by doing, you know, you got to meet each other halfway on this one. So let's take Wendy and I. You want to know our personalities? You want to know some real stuff about how this applies to our lives? 
So, Wendy has the first two personalities that we talked about. She's demanding and assertive, and she's life of the party. Guess which one y'all get? Life of the party. Guess which one I get at home? Demanding. <laughs> I, my primary personality is servant-based. My secondary personality is life of the party. So between the two of us, we're covering three of the four personalities, but we actually share one. You ever think that there's times that we're just out in public together and we're just having a great time and life is good and we're just, and then there's times when we're out in public and I just can't wait to get home. And I can start developing lies in my head. Why, what's wrong with me? That sometimes I enjoy being out there in public with her and sometimes I just want to be at home. And then we start to try to figure out what's wrong and diagnose it. Well, I must just be tired or in extreme examples, you may have opposing personalities and a doctor's going to be real quick to call that bipolar. Maybe it's not. Maybe you just don't understand your personalities. I'm not saying that bipolar is not something. I'm saying sometimes things get misdiagnosed. We have had couples come to us that are on medication for bipolar, simply starting to understand their personalities and the differences made them feel normal and got them off the medicine. Again, it took time because that's pretty serious medicine to come off of. But it's all the mental battles, the lies, the fears and everything that are twirling up here because they didn't understand each other. So I'm going to give you a real vulnerable example. She's given me permission to do this, right? I still have permission? Yes, sir. All right. So we go to church. Our previous church we went to had a ton of people. Um, there's anywhere from like 1,500, 2,000 people there on a Sunday. So we go to church. Some Sundays I go to church. Oh, by the way, I work there. So sometimes we go to church and I'm on fire. I can't wait to get there and be around people. And some Sundays I'm praying all the way to church. God, please help me not to go off on somebody today. Please help me not to be rude to somebody today. And I had to recognize some Sundays I'm going in one personality. Some Sundays I'm going in the other. Okay, so we get to church. Her eye kicks in. That's the personality that likes people. So it kicks in. I can't get her to get out of church. I can't get her to leave. Right? And I just want to get away from people. So I'm getting frustrated. All right, now we finally tear out of there. We get in the car and we come home. Well, I'm a little frustrated. I'm just trying not to be, you know, create an argument or something. We get home. And my lovely wife, this life of the party, turns into baby Hitler and starts telling me everything we got to get done. It's mostly my fault because it's my dirty office and all this. It's got to be cleaned up before we have small group at our house in two hours. Okay? So what's the lie I start believing? Why does everyone else get the best of her and I don't? Guess what? Remember the negative of my major personality? I get my feelings hurt. You think Satan doesn't know your personality and know how to work against you? I'm just being vulnerable about it. Okay? My day is shot, ruined. I can't rest. I'm mad at her. I'm all sulking over here because that's what this personality type does too. We hold a lot in and we hold it in and we just stew on it until it erupts like a volcano. <laughs> is this hitting home with anybody? Okay. So now we know each other's personality types. We've got to do something about it. Okay? So now we go to church. We walk through the exact same scenario. We go to church. She's wanting to be around all the people I want to get out of there. So I go grab our two boys at a children's church. And I say, I'm going to meet. I'm going to get the boys. I'm going to meet you at the car. We go to the car. I just got away from all those people. I'm with my two sons. We start the car, turn it on K-Love or whatever. And I'm asking them what they learn in church. And I'm having good quality time with my sons. I'm totally resting. She's inside resting. Eventually, she stumbles out to the car. She's like, how did it get to be this late? I'm picking on her a little bit. And on the way home, I know when we get home, she's going to turn into getting something done. Sounds a lot better than baby Hitler, right? <laughs> getting things done. And I got to make sure I don't turn into get your feelings hurt, guy. So on the way home, I say, honey, what do we need to get done when we get home, when I get home to get ready for small groups? I'm getting ahead of it. And then she tells me, well, I need you to do this, this, this. And I'm in my mind going, don't get your feelings hurt, don't get your feelings hurt, don't get your feelings hurt. She says something like your office is really messy like always and blah, blah, blah. So then I have this third personality, oh, by the way, that's the fourth. So we got all four now. 
And that fourth personality says things need to go in, or my, my third personality, getting confused, says I need things to go in order. So I say, honey, what needs to get done? She tells me, and I say, can I put it in the right of the order I want to put it in? She said, I don't really care as long as it gets done. Now we get home. I start doing the things I need to get done, and we're both happy, and we're both resting, and we avoided an argument we were having every Sunday between church and small group. Now, maybe we never had the argument out loud. It was just mostly me having it in my head. <laughs> she never knew anything was wrong. That's not fair to her because I bottled it in and I had fears to not come and tell it. So I'm giving you that vulnerable example because I want you to understand how powerful this is. Let me tell you something with a D personality that you have to learn how to do. When you're in that demanding D personality, you've got to step back and you've got to not be um, just so harsh because you can ask people to do things for you more in a loving way and then thank them after they've done that instead of demand them to do it. That does help with this type of a personality that you say, thank you so much for helping me get that done. I, I feel better. We've got our house clean. We've got this done. Thank you. So you remember our example last night. I try to serve her and meet her love, love language. That's a personality thing and a love language thing. She comes home, says, take the garbage out. She's in her personality. I've got to get this done. She has to get that done before she can see everything else. I get my feelings hurt easy. You see how all these are working together? Lies, fear, personality traits. Satan knows this about you guys. And he knows how to stir that pot. And he knows that one leads to the next, that leads to the next, and it's just a vicious cycle. So the challenge is to invest some time. And again, we can't do it this morning. If you guys, again, you want to come to us and do it one-on-one, -on -one, you want us to come to your church and do it, we'd love to do it because I think this is so powerful for you to understand. We do it with every couple we meet with, every couple I do premarital counseling with because I think it's that important. All right, so we're going to switch gears a little bit. And by the way, when this is over with today, if you've got questions you want to ask, that would be a great time to come talk to us to, if, if we say anything's confusing or you need clarity on or you just have a question. Um, so we're going to switch gears and let Wendy talk about a couple things. She's going to talk a little bit about praying for your spouse and the importance of boundaries. Um, prayer is just good, period, for yourself. Um, I've already kind of talked about that a little bit before, but, um, you know, in Luke 2, 36, 36.